We're here at the Royal Astronomical Society's National Astronomy Meeting at the University of Portsmouth, and joining me is Professor Martin Barstow from the University of Leicester. Uh, he's also the um, president of the Royal Astronomical Society. Martin, good to meet you. I'm you. Um, you're presenting today about yeah. a next generation space telescope, a really exciting project about would be the biggest space tele telescope ever launched. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, this telescope? Well, what we're hoping it will be, and it's not approved yet, is something that will be between an 8 and 16 metres aperture telescope. So if you think about Hubble, which is 2.5 metres, James Webb Space Telescope, which is 6 metres, okay. you're talking about the next generation of large telescopes in space that will be able to collect more light and get much better spectral resolution, much better images than before. Mm -hmm. What kind of science would it be doing? It's, it's a multi-purpose telescope. It can do a whole lot of things. It can study stars, it can study galaxies. But I think one of the crucial things it will be able to do that nothing has been able to do so far is probe what we call the habitable zones around stars like our own sun and detect directly any extra planet, uh, exoplanet Earths that might be out there. And the really important thing is take spectra of those objects and study their atmospheres directly for the first time. And of course, the big question is, are we alone? If we can identify things in the atmospheres of those planets like oxygen and methane and ozone, that's a, a pretty clear signature that there's some kind of biological activity going on. So in a sense, it's the holy grail of studying extrasolar planets. And what are the challenges of launching a space telescope? Obviously, it costs money and you need a big rocket to it get into space. It costs money and you need a big rocket and it's going to be a big uh, piece of glass. If it's a solid piece of glass, it's going to be very heavy uh, and that will limit how large a telescope we can uh, launch. Hopefully, we'll actually be able to build something where you can unfold the mirror from several segments and that allows you to, to build something bigger than if you create a single mirror. We will have tested that with the James Webb Space Telescope. So the actual step in technology necessary for going to a larger aperture isn't necessarily as big as it might be because we already have that experience. Mm -hmm. We already have Hubble and it's been mm -hmm. amazingly successful and in a few years the James Webb Space Telescope is also going to launch. So why do we need another space telescope? Well, everything's got a limited life. Hubble will not last forever. I hope it will last as long as possible but it could finish tomorrow if something goes wrong with the spacecraft or at least in a few years time we should anticipate that we won't have Hubble any longer. When James Webb gets launched it's not a telescope that we will be able to repair and therefore that will have a much more limited life in fact than the Hubble Space Telescope has had, maybe five or six years. So eventually we'll have to replace that uh, and at last is the next obvious step beyond the James Webb Space Telescope. Obviously there's a lot of obstacles between talking about it now and launching it. Um, so what do we need to do to be able to get this space telescope built? Oh, we need to get money for a start. Uh, the the age-old problem of building anything like this is getting the finance together, getting the space agencies to back it. and um, We have to convince them, because it's not going to be a cheap mission, that it's worth pursuing and the science is important and the technology we get out of it is important as well because while we do astronomy for the joy of discovering what's out there in the universe there are important things that come out of it such as spin off into technology that in, in a sense are part of the justification for spending the money so we have to get everybody together all the agencies it's going to be more than just NASA although NASA will probably lead it uh, because it's going to be so expensive compared to what we've flown before, that it will need a lot of partners. And when can we expect this to launch if it does get funding? Well, I think the earliest it could be launched is in about 15 years' time, which seems a long way ahead. But if you think back to when James Webb Space Telescope was first conceived, that was about 15 years ago. The Hubble Space Telescope was first thought about in the mid to late 1960s before being launched in 1990. With the financial and technological challenges of these big missions, it does take a long time to actually get them from the drawing board into reality. Well, hopefully in the 2030s we'll be seeing some amazing pictures from Atlas and maybe even find Earth's twin. Professor Basto, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.